Hey guys, Woodruff here. Um, now we're going to get into urinary retention. So this is the opposite of incontinence. It's where um, a patient's holding onto urine or urine is remaining in their bladder um, instead of obviously being released. Uh, there is acute urinary retention where you're unable to urinate at all like literally can't get a single drop out, or there's chronic where you can't empty your bladder fully. So you're urinating, but you're going like maybe a little bit at a time, or you're not emptying fully when you are going. Um, causes are usually obstruction. We talk about like prostate issues, other obstruction, um, you know, that might be from cancers, um, strictures, things like that. Having a weak bladder muscle um, can also make it where it's hard if the bladder's not contracting well. Um, having neurological or reflex problems, like we talk about with like spinal cord injuries, they can have, um, sorry, my cat's being my cat. Um, having those um, loss of that reflex to tell your bladder to relax and empty. Um, diabetes, we talked about um, a neurogenic bladder, um, which can be a cause of urinary retention. And then medications like anticholinergics can also cause you to um, have urinary retention. So expected findings for urinary retention are going to be things like hesitancy or difficulty starting your stream, a weak urinary stream, frequent small voids, um, a feeling of abdominal pressure, a lack of urge to urinate. It can vary, of course, depending on the patient, depends on the cause. And then an, oh, one sec, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. No, it's just going to make me hang on awkwardly. Okay, it's not coming. Um, and then um, the abnormal PVR. And if you remember from my last video, I talked about a PVR is a post void residual and it's what's left in the bladder after you urinate. And it should be um, less than 50. Um, you know, as you're getting up and getting close to 200, there's usually some sort of abnormality going on. Uh, we want to ask them about any issues with urination, about their flow, the frequency, quantity of their urine, and then also look for signs of infection because with urinary retention, I'm always going to be scared about infection because if they're having urinary retention, that means urine is chilling in their bladder and when urine has stasis, it's going to be high risk for infection. So urinary retention is better if they're able to void spontaneously without difficulty or if they have an improved PVR or post-void residual. Um, it's going to be worse if they have continued episodes of retention or signs of a complication. Like the biggest thing I'm worried about, like life or death thing, of course, is bladder rupture. It's a potential emergency where their bladder can literally burst. Um, Sometimes I've wondered as a nurse how my bladder has not burst when it's been super full sometimes, um, you know, holding that for like a whole 12-hour shift. But somehow still here, you know, we have those stretchy bladders as nurses. Um, then, of course, signs of infection like a urinary tract infection. So this is going to be the exact same as the incontinence diagnostic testing, maybe a pelvic exam, rule out infection with the urinalysis, and then doing that PVR to see if they're retaining urine or what's going on. So medical treatments that we do for urinary retention are going to be things like timed voiding or double voiding. So timed voiding is taking them to the bathroom every few hours to uh, make sure that they're like on a schedule and regularly emptying, even if they don't feel like they have to go. And then double voiding is having them sit on the toilet or stand up, whatever they're doing, go to the bathroom, then wait a minute, then go again. Um, so not leave. Uh, so like pretty much going twice. Um, if they're unable to avoid, they may need straight catheterization or they could need temporary placement of a Foley catheter or long term. If this is like a spinal issue, when I used to do spinal rehab, we had a lot of patients with the super pubic catheters, um, which is the more um, long term catheters. Just remember that acute retention is an emergency. So like if you have a patient that's coming in and they have a distended bladder, um, your priority is going to be to relieve that obstruction. Um, it can rupture. So we're not going to be messing around and being like, oh, I wonder what the cause is. Like, let's relieve the obstruction first, then we'll get to the bottom of the cause. Um, we also are going to check PVR or post void residual on a regular schedule and be checking for how they're improving. That's, of course, um, after they get a catheter out, if they have a catheter in, we can't check that. Um, and then we might give them medications, depending on the cause, to relax their urinary muscles like alpha blockers, um, tamsolacin. You're going to see tamsolacin is used for pretty much almost all disease processes we're going to talk about. For urinary, you're going to use tamsolacin, so become familiar with it. I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth when we go over BPH.
um, then surgery. If their prostate is the problem that's leading to it, you know, they might need prostate surgery. If there's some other issue with their other structures, they might need a pelvic reconstruction, something like that. Um, but a lot of times it's just lifestyle and, um, uh, you know, schedule changes. As a nurse, my focus is going to be on supporting a positive urination environment. So, you know, we tend to um, get very comfortable being around people when they're going to the bathroom, which is fine for us. Because sometimes I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, I don't want to leave and take my gloves off if they're going to be going real quick. And some people can go with you standing in the room. But keep in mind, most people aren't used, to, unless you're like me, I literally have a video of my son this morning with his hand under the door as I'm trying to go to the bathroom and his hand just going like this under the door. Um, cause I never can go to the bathroom alone or have privacy. Um, so, um, you know, kind of keep in mind that most people, unless they're a parent or, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, our constant patient, they're used to peeing or pooping, whatever they're doing in private. So um, if it's safe to leave them and give them some space, please do that. Um, I always try to tell people, like, once I put them on a pan, I just ask them, like, hey, do you need privacy? And if they're like, oh, no, I'm good, then I I'll stay if that's okay with them. Or like, you know, as I always say, do you need some time? Um, and then they'll be like, nope, I'm pretty quick. Because sometimes they want, they're just like, hey, you're in here, let's get this done. Um, but just always respect their wishes, you know, as much as it might seem like, oh, you know, I don't want to have to leave and come back. Um, you want to, create an environment that's going to help them uh, make sure that they are um, as comfortable as they can be. Those bedpans were designed to be very uncomfortable, <laughs> not on purpose, but it's just the way that they are. They're never comfortable. I've never had someone get on one and be like, oh yeah, this is it. Um, so just try to create the best um, environment that you can sit them upright. If you're going to put them on a bedpan, um, try to keep them um, warm and covered and feeling, um, uh, what do you call them, feeling the best that they can before they void um, to promote uh, as normal of urination as possible. Uh, keeping them on a voiding schedule, again, this is just where we take them to the bathroom every few hours just to kind of keep them on a schedule um, because either whether it's their minds or their bodies not telling them they need to go, um, it's definitely important to um, kind of keep them uh, regular. Um, you want to assess regularly for UTIs or other complications um, like infection and things like that that can come up, especially if someone has chronic urinary retention. I'm going to be um, regularly checking their urine, regularly checking for fevers and other signs of infection. Um, and then education with urinary retention, we want them to drink water. Now, sometimes people with urinary retention, we see this with BPH too, is they're like, Ooh, I'm going to drink less and then I'll have less retention. But here's the thing. It actually can lead to more problems like infection and other things. So we want them to drink water, but we just don't want them to be drinking like a big jug. Like, you know, like I have my big jug of water here, well, let's see, the big jug of water here. And, um, you know, if, if they're drinking that in one sitting, that's not going to be helpful for them. So small quantities of water throughout the day. And sometimes, especially for people with prostate issues, we tell them to limit their water intake at night so they don't have the nocturia. Um, we want to avoid the irritants, the excessive alcohol intake, um, caffeine, the citrus juices, artificial sweeteners, all of that. Um, doing regular bladder training. So sometimes, again, that's just getting the bladder on a schedule. Um, if they need to uh, be um, or use intermittent calf um, or do regular intermittent calfing, we just need to train them for that. And then something else that can help them at home if they're having chronic is um, sitting in a warm tub of water or taking a warm shower first can help promote um, a positive uh, urination experience. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, stop. So anyway, I will see you next for a video all about Foley catheters. See you there.